afternoon, Howard Wake, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. Our distinguished guest this afternoon is Sean Ramos, not Ramos, Ramos of Sonetric. And we have a special, special dream home for us greenies. I think everybody out there is going to be drooling. Yes, I want this type of home. So welcome, Sean. Hi, Thanks how are you? So Thanks for having for, me. Yeah. And a little background first on, on what this home is all about. A little, little personal connection here. Sure. Um, yeah. I've been in the solar industry for the last five years or so. Um, about, about a year ago, we decided to have a baby, and we needed just a little bit more room uh, for our family to grow. Um, we also wanted to make some room for my parents as they were aging to have a safe place to spend with us uh, and encourage my sister and her family to join us as well. So uh, we just needed a little bit more space to grow and um, me being in the energy efficiency um, field was looking to incorporate as many of the available technologies to save as much as I can and be as comfortable as I can. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so why don't we uh, bring up the first slide. We got lots of slides to cover and I want to talk about each one of them. So uh, basically, it was an energy efficiency retrofit. Um, in, in Hawaii, there's a lot of three bedroom, one baths. Um, some people tend to build a little studio onto the back of their house for their for their family, kind of an ohana, so to speak. Um, and that's what we started with. It was started out as a basically a three bedroom, one bath with a studio on the back. Uh, the energy usage in the beginning was about $450. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were spending that every month. Uh, it was coming out, and um, you know we were just looking for ways yeah, to, that, to make the house more that, efficient. That's pretty typical for an air-conditioned home. It, it is. Probably. It is, yeah. So so what we were, our goal was to, to turn the studio in the back into a one-bedroom, one-bath, and then go above the garage and build another three-bedroom, two-bath for us to live, mm -hmm. and so we can have kind of a long-term home for everybody to join us. Yeah. Uh, so we basically cut off the back of the house right above the studio, uh, went up and uh, built an addition that uh, that was going to be energy efficient there. Mm -hmm. um, the, the next slide will show um, kind of kind of what our goals were for the energy efficiency upgrade. Uh, we were trying to reduce our energy usage, um, you know, add the three bedroom, two bath addition, and hopefully use some of the technology to inspire others to, to go green and try and see that they can be comfortable um, while saving as well. And I might throw into that comfort and health. It turns out the generally the more efficient a home is, the more comfortable it is, and the healthier it is. That's true. <clears throat> and of course, you're keeping all those dollars in, in your pocket. That's right. That's exactly and right. you're much better able to pay the mortgage that way. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um, so the next slide um, basically just kind of starts um, um, the energy efficient action plan. Uh, we're looking at to reduce the hot water costs because um, basically that's the first big piece that you can take off of your energy pie. On the right, you can see there kind of typically how energy is being used in the in the islands. Uh, just shows that a good portion of it is for uh, heating hot water. So we went ahead and wanted to try and attack that first and just take that off of there. Um, a lot of people are interested in solar power using photovoltaic, uh, and they tend to kind of jump into that first uh, before they do any energy efficiency on the home. Um, if you were to look on HECO's website, first thing they would recommend before you go photovoltaic is to make the home more efficient. Um, so we were just trying to kind of hit some of those uh, line items so that instead of having a giant bill uh, and a giant solar system, we could shrink that usage down and then have a much smaller system and still accomplish uh, the same goals. So and let me jump into that. Uh, we in the energy office constantly recommend water heat, solar water heating, solar water heating, solar water heating, and it's not nearly as popular these days as is photovoltaic. And the best answer, I, I ask the experts, what's going on here? And they say, Howard, it's just not sexy. Mm. If there's no glamour to it, it's not high tech, you can't point to it and say, how oh, isn't that beautiful out there? Sure, and sure. And people, in my humble opinion, and probably yours too, are wasting a heck of a lot of energy and a heck of a lot of dollars sure. by neglecting that solar water heating first. For one thing, uh, Hawaii Energy will rebate you and then you get your federal tax credit and your state tax credit. That's right. Uh, typically, uh, with the solar hot water system, you can take about 30 to 50 percent off your energy bill. Mm -hmm. uh, so for people that are trying to save and without having to wait the long lines, 
in the Department of Permitting and with TECO to get approved for your solar system. Uh, in my area, in, in Enchanted Lakes, the wait was over a year and four months. Yes. So what we can do is we can actually start saving today uh, by putting hot water on. Uh, you get about 65% of your money back, pays itself off in about 18 months, and it attacks the bill right away. Uh, and, so. and as you pointed out, virtually zero permitting time. No, it, we can pull the permit online. Mm -hmm. uh, we can put it on the yeah. very next day. You can start saving that month and kind of see what your bill comes down to. And with some of the other energy efficient um, work that you can do on the home, you can see what that bill comes down to and then you can adjust your PV system accordingly. Yeah. Um, that way either you can stay with the same size PV system and have a surplus in case you're planning on adding more things, like in our case we we're adding an electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. So we made that additional room that we had created from energy efficiency, we replaced it with the EV and it, and it kept it about yeah. the same or slightly less. And in terms of dollars, even if a solar water heating system, in your case, you've got a lot, a lot of people under the roof there, might be seven, seven and a half thousand dollars, given Hawaii Energy's rebate plus a tax credit, you're not talking much more than two thousand. That's correct. Yeah. And then, as you pointed out, really, really quick. That's right. There. Yeah, we actually decided in, to add a second um, solar hot water system for the house mm -hmm. too. So now we have uh, 240 gallons, which is good for uh, up to eight to ten people. Um, we did add some uh, bathtubs, and so those tend to use a little bit more water. So we just kind of oversized the system mm -hmm. just so that we can have enough for everyone and still be able to take a bath if we'd like to. Yeah, um, and, and that addresses the problem that people bring up. What about the 40 days and 40 nights of rain that we had a few years ago? 240 gallons, even for a large family, that's good. It'll be more than enough, yeah. And the, and the thickness of the insulation in the tank will hold it for three to five, six days mm -hmm. at a, at least a higher temperature so that the electricity doesn't have to work so hard to bring it up to a comfortable yeah. level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I just want, really wanted to drive that home, and I'm, I'm glad sure. you and I are in the same page there. Absolutely. So um, I guess you can see the next slide there. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much we're just going to be going from uh, a lower usage there uh, with the hot water. You can see the 20-year savings in that is about $32,400 or so, and it does take only about two years to pay it off. Uh, what people do forget, which I want to remind our, our viewers at home, is you do have to do a little bit of maintenance with hot water. Uh, every year they recommend flushing that out. Uh, homeowners can do that themselves, or they can have a professional do it. Um, but we do recommend maintaining your system every three to five years. Uh, there is a little rod in the middle that protects a tank from rusting, mm -hmm. and it's called the anode rod. Uh, it's usually made of zinc, and what it does is it attracts all the rust to it. Mm -hmm. uh, once it degrades, then the rust starts attacking the tank. Uh, people kind of tend to forget how much they're saving with hot water until it breaks. Yes. And a lot of times they'll refer back to electricity and then they see their electric bill go up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you can just take the time every three to five years to maintain it, they can last 20 to 30 years or more. Uh, yeah. So in, in, in my personal case, uh, suddenly there was all this ooky water draining out of my hot water area and the old tank had finally given up the ghost. You do need to replace the tank every 10 years or so. They're, they're actually warranted for 10 years, but if yeah. you maintain it every three to five years, it can last 20 or up to even 30 years. Yeah. Wow. So, okay. yeah. so you can see the next slide here. It just discusses a little bit um, about some of the other efficiency we're doing uh, with the home there. Uh, so the second biggest user for Hawaii uh, is obviously cooling down the home. Uh, so we were taking bids on air conditioners to see how much it would cost, and they were quoting us about $20,000 for uh, four zones, upstairs and downstairs, two zones, and then two for our living area. Uh, the operating cost is two to $400 per month. So even at 200, you're looking at about $2,400 uh, per year, and there's no rebates for that. So the total 20-year cost is over almost $70,000 to operate that, and that's only a few hours a day. If you're running at 24 hours a day, it could be uh, half again or, or maybe even double that. So we just decided that we were going to stay comfortable, leave our windows open, uh, enjoy the breezes that are coming in, and basically accelerate them using a whole house fan system. So whole house fans, basically they operate in the, um, the attic space, and they're pulling cool air into the room and out the attic. So the challenge there is just having adequate ventilation. Uh, so we created a ridge vent and some ventilation around the roof uh, to accommodate that. 
and basically it reduces the odor, it reduces the dander, allergens. Uh, in my case, I have a baby, so there's that smell from the baby bucket. Uh, we can turn that on and it pulls those odors right out of the room. Uh, as well as in our kitchen, we didn't want to have a hood uh, blocking the view and we wanted to keep it an open concept. Mm -hmm. So we're able to use a whole house fan to evacuate all of the food odors mm -hmm. and smoke as well. And we've been able to, to accomplish that uh, using the whole house fans. They are, they're about 10,000 installed uh, um, and they only cost about 240 per year versus 2,400. Yeah. So a pretty significant savings there. And there are some rebates that come with whole house fans. You get about $350 at $75 a fan. Uh, so the total cost about four, uh, for, four, for, for 20 years is uh, fourteen thousand four fifty, and you save over uh, fifty three thousand dollars. Um, pretty good return. Yeah. Absolutely. That's People do tend to forget to change their filters in those AC units, so you end up catching a lot of pollen, uh, transmitting that into the home. People have allergies. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's a lot of other things that kind of happen within the AC world, uh, plus all the energy that it takes to operate it, um, as well as when it breaks. You know, the, you got the freon or, or the, the 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 coolant that can be an energy uh, that can be actually an environmental hazard. Mm -hmm. uh, as well when that breaks. And so we were just trying to avoid that whole uh, thing by just staying with the whole house fan system. And let me point out for those who, like me, thought of a whole house fan as just one great big old fan. It was noisy. It was just in one part of the home and it did a good job of exhausting. That, the air from that part of the home, as long as you didn't mind the noise, the new whole house fans have outlets in all the different rooms and they suck the air up into the attic very, very quietly because it's a series of little fans. Correct. And then exhaust the air out, out into the, uh, the atmosphere. That's right. And, oh. and totally, totally silent. That's correct. Yeah. They actually created a, um, a, a motor that is brushless. So it's almost basically a magnetic levitation type of a motor that they were using in RC cars. And they expanded on that. And so Island Cooling here locally provides the whole house fans. Uh, they're whisper quiet. Uh, they only take about eight dollars a month to run mm -hmm. versus two to four hundred um, and it does vent out nicely and, and you can set it on a timer so if you want to have an hour, two, three, four hours or eight hours or if you want to leave it on all the time mm -hmm. um, that way it can actually shut off on its own yeah. if you wanted to. Precisely and on that cheery note we need to take a break already. This is Think Tech Hawaii back in a moment. You can be the greatest, you can be the best You can be the king, come laying on your chest You can beat the world, you can beat the war You can talk to God, go banging on his door You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock You can move a mountain, you can break rocks You can be a master, don't wait for luck Dedicate yourself and you can find yourself Good afternoon again, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. Honored guest today, Sean Ramos of Sunetric, and we are describing his personal home where he expanded the heck out of it to accommodate a new baby, his parents and his sister's family, and the energy use was 450 in the smaller home, 
Uh, that's a month, now it's 150. How in the world did he achieve this magic while providing a healthier, more comfortable home? So welcome back again. Thank you very much, appreciate and it. And let's launch into our next topic here. Terrific, so um, yeah, you can see on this in the next slide here that uh, we're talking a little bit about radiant heat. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can stop the heat from coming into the home, uh, you can reduce the cost of cooling the home. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's actually some technology they can use for the decking that actually has a radiant barrier on the inside of it, kind of mm -hmm. like a space blanket material. Mm -hmm. um, and the new shingles that we have today actually have a light reflective property to them uh, that can reduce the heat in the attic space significantly. If you can keep that energy uh, from getting into the house, you don't have to expel it, you don't have to try and accommodate mm -hmm. for its heat. So, it, um, it can get up easily to 140 degrees in an attic, and I've seen attics 160 degrees. Correct. With, without this technology. That's right, yeah. and it, that's how hot um, most attics are. Uh, mm -hmm. Ours is about 100 degrees, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. or slightly less on a cooler day, obviously, but I, I can walk comfortably on the roof material without shoes on, it doesn't burn mm -hmm. me, um, and that heat just keeps from coming into the house. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see there on the next slide there, it kind of discusses a little bit about transportation. Uh, we were planning on adding an electric vehicle to our um, to our fleet. Um, I per currently drive a Prius, I really love it, at 42 mm -hmm. miles a gallon, mm -hmm. I can't complain. Uh, you know, you don't have to worry about the range. Uh, so I use that for my sales vehicles, but uh, for our personal vehicles, having a, a leaf was really attractive to us mm -hmm. and charging it from the sun was something that we wanted to do. So you can see the savings there, uh, it's about 10 years, it's about 12,000 or so, um, and, and that's that's not bad if you're gonna be looking at trying to trying to charge using the sun. Mm -hmm. um, on the next slide, you can see um, kind of a little bit talks uh, about after we've done all of that efficiency work, um, basically it, it then goes to being able to um, save using um, uh, our lighting. So um, if you just um, move forward one yep. slide there, yeah. Uh, the, 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 a lot of people are familiar with lighting. Uh, that's kind of the first thing people think of when they're trying to save on their mm -hmm. energy bill. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's only about five to 10% of your total usage. So mm -hmm. uh, while you're spending most of your time, it's actually kind of the least beneficial. Yeah. So in, in a commercial building, it's a real big chunk of the pie, but not, not for a residential. Not for residential, yeah. 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 So, mm -hmm. so what we did is we actually accomplished um, some daylight lighting by using what are called sun tunnels or light tubes and they just basically have a little lens that sits on the roof there and it drags light in using a reflective tunnel into the home so uh, we had a wall in our house that had no windows on it and so we were able to drag those uh, three sun tunnels there we're able to drag in daylighting and you can see also there in the bathroom there uh, it's, a, it's a slightly larger version of the sun tunnel and we never have to turn on the lights until about 6 30 or 7 o'clock at night yeah and and in a bathroom for the, the ladies the ladies like a lot of light in the bathroom, so they get all their makeup absolutely. straight and everything. Absolutely, yeah. and we yeah. have a we have a uh, walk-in closet that I didn't show here, unfortunately, but uh, it also has one in the walk-in closet that kind of just helps you to plan for the day. Mm -hmm. When you can tell by how much light is coming in, is if it's a real bright day, mm -hmm. or it'll be a little dimmer if it's cloudy. So yeah. you can kind of help to prepare for the weather mm -hmm. um, as it approaches, and uh, and that was something that we wanted to incorporate. Walk-in closet, you know exactly what your clothes look like exactly. too, whereas most closets are kind exactly. of dim. and in the yeah. next slide is kind of what most people start with. Uh, by basically cutting our energy usage by over 50%, we now can have a much smaller system to cover the rest of the energy. So mm -hmm. instead of spending mm -hmm. over $45,000, we're able to reduce the system cost down to 17. Instead of covering a $450 bill, we're only having to cover a $200 bill. And I was able to cut 20 panels off of my system. Mm -hmm. uh, so what that did is it uh, reduced the footprint on the roof there. Uh, it made it able to fit in a much smaller area. Uh, and we we were able to go ahead and uh, achieve the goal of the maximum offset, mm -hmm. uh, lowering the bill down to about eighteen dollars and thirty-six cents uh, from Hawaiian Electric uh, when we first turned it on. Uh, wow. When we added a few of the other improvements, it did go up a little bit, but it's still hovering between fifty and a hundred dollars. And and this is worth going over again because I can't tell you how many people I and other people in the energy office talk to and all they want to do is PV. PV is sexy, it's the in thing, it's high tech, I guess you can brag about it. Sure. But as you pointed out, a big PV system on a typical home can be what is, uh, did you cite $45,000? Yeah, well now people are having to have batteries so it's even mm -hmm. more important yeah. to 
to do energy efficiency now because mm -hmm. the cost of a solar system has increased with the necessity of he having to use a battery on the home. Mm -hmm. So um, HECO has asked us to store some of our energy rather than providing it back to them at the grid because they had a surplus mm -hmm. and they're just having mm -hmm. a hard time managing that surplus and using it uh, in an effective way. And so uh, now that the net energy metering program has been fully subscribed and the customer generated system um, mm -hmm. program has been fully subscribed, uh, they did uh, basically require people uh, for the most part in the higher saturated areas to, to store their additional energy so they can use it for themselves at night. Um, now what that's done unfortunately is it has raised the price significantly mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. it's even more important to try and do some energy efficiency on the home so that we can keep that cost affordable, yeah. uh, help us going forward to that 100% renewable energy goal that we have mm -hmm. as a state um, and being able to uh, make it affordable and, and comfortable for everybody. Yeah. And j just a side note on the battery, we're not talking a standard uh, car battery sitting somewhere. These are high-tech zinc, no, li lithium, All lithium. lithium yeah. ion, mm -hmm. and they're safe, they're stored outside the home generally, and as you're indicating, in the middle of the day we have so much PV out there on our roofs that they're the uh, power plants can't ramp down far enough to accommodate all of that PV, so you've got a lot of wasted energy at That's the hottest true. time of the day. So if you have a battery in your home, you during w w the excess time, you put that ba the, all that energy into the battery, and then in Hawaii, we have what's called the evening peak where we use more electricity than any other time, now your battery comes in and it does what's called shave that peak and it has really good implications for Hawaii being totally, totally energy efficient. Absolutely, and, yeah. and just to kind of complete the whole circle here, mm -hmm. uh, the last slide that you can see there, it just talks about the total energy efficiency technology we have there. Mm -hmm. So with the hot water, 20 year savings, about $43,000 without using a whole house fan system instead of air conditioning, operating costs, savings about seven. $73,500. Uh, lighting savings for the sun tunnels is about $86.50. And then um, scrolling back over to the PV side, uh, you can kind of see that there's some significant savings there adding up to about $192,540. Um, the savings from 20 years on the PV side was about $67,200. So we did add some permanent value to the home. Um, and that savings in 20 years actually paid for almost two thirds of the improvement itself. Uh, we spent about 365000 um, about 192540 of that is going to be coming back to us in, in the form of efficiency, um, and the house went from about eight hundred to almost $1.3 in value. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. it's increased in value, the equity has improved, mm -hmm. um, the, the savings is more comfortable for us, and we're living in a healthier and a brighter, safe, mm -hmm. safer mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. And you, you've got a little baby to raise in there. Yeah. She loves yeah. it. Yeah. She yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. loves it, yeah. So payback, shade over four years, implications for that if a bank were to hang a bank banner over its front door and say 25% interest, exclamation mark. I think people would be marching through those bank doors pretty darn quickly. That's true. And that, that's what you are, are realizing here. That's right. A 25% yeah. yearly return on your investment. That's that's a really good yeah. investment. I don't know yeah. a lot of investments that can get 25% no, return. No, no. So yeah, yeah now we're, we're able mm -hmm. to drive around comfortably. We charge using the sun. Uh, we're nice and cool. Um, you know, the sun tunnels actually have a little bit of a side effect of being a little too bright at times. Mm -hmm. So you just gotta close that bathroom door if you wanna make it nice and dark in your room. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the dimmable LEDs are really sweet. Uh, we've added a few extra bells and whistles. We have an Apple uh, TV that we can throw our computer screens up on. Uh, we mm -hmm. have some lights from Hue Lighting, which is a Philips lights that's a LED, um, a multiple colors so we can control the lighting mm -hmm. and the color of the home mm -hmm. uh, using our app. So just kind of trying to get as, as few, uh, as many of the different technologies available so I can kind of create a showroom and people can come over to my home see how we're living and take a look at the technology see if it's for them mm -hmm. um, and really get a feel for how it actually works mm -hmm. and then you mentioned Hawaii's goal of it's a hundred percent clean energy by the year 2045 which is what 28 years from now correct yeah correct yeah. and yeah. we all have to do our part to to make mm -hmm. that happen mm -hmm. um, you know uh, the technology that we have available to us to reduce the energy in our homes and business is available today. It's incentivized. Um, there's absolutely no reason not to uh, avoid it other than not knowing how it works. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. maybe it's, it is important to take a 
look at your home or your business and take a look at the energy and see where it's going. Mm -hmm. And if you're happy with the way it is, maybe stick stick it out. But if you find that the savings is something that's appealing to you uh, and the cost is not prohibitive, mm -hmm. um, you maybe explore some of these technologies, make yourself a little bit greener while you're, go while you're doing it. And then looking at the larger picture, there's a lot of talk about climate change and climate change doesn't exist, but I think most of us, especially in Hawaii, will agree that climate change does exist. We're having issues now with the rising sea level and encroaching That's right. on our, our properties. And every time you shift away from Hawaiian Electric's normal generation, that means that they are burning less oil. That's right. Oil is a, uh, what would you call it, a climate changer. It is. You're having all of this carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The carbon dioxide is the prime cause of global warming. And actually not having a, mm -hmm. a, a, enough finances is a primary cause of dysfunction in the home as well. So mm -hmm. if we're able to mm -hmm. keep some of those resources uh, in Hawaii and in the workers, in the people's mm -hmm. pockets, uh, and in the economy, yeah. uh, you know, it creates a more thriving uh, 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 environment for uh, growth and allows us mm -hmm. to, do, to do more with what we have and, and still be comfortable. A few years ago, Hawaii's gross uh, gross state product was about $70 billion, and it, on that year we spent $7 billion on oil. 10% of all of our wealth went overseas to pay for oil. And thanks to people like you, we are decreasing, decreasing, decreasing this. Absolutely. We've been able to uh, put a few of the main power generators on standby. We estimate that it's over 700,000 barrels of oil are not mm -hmm. making the trip to the island anymore mm -hmm. uh, due to solar power and we are hovering between 8 and a 12 percent penetration on solar power which is it's a very small amount but it's double pretty much anybody else in the nation so we do have the highest penetration of solar uh, and renewable energy in, this, in, the, in the nation. Good reason. And we need to wrap up. Is there a final slide giving you particulars here? Yep, there you is. Oh no, no. Yep, that's the one. Oh, so yeah, there, there you are, there you are. So yeah. pretty much that has a picture of the final uh, home there, and uh, it's it's only about $100 now a month for a seven-bedroom, four-bath. Uh, we're able to maintain a comfortable, energy-efficient, safe, and green environment mm -hmm. to live, and that's just so that the, the keiki can enjoy those resources and have nice, clean water and clean air moving forwards. Uh, if you're interested in getting some information on how you can get an energy audit done on your home, um, it does not cost anything, and we can come out there and take a look at what you're using and how you're using it and give you some suggestions on some ways you can cut um, uh, cut the, some of that usage down. Um, you know, we do have a, I have a vendor's list of, of uh, people that can help you with that as well. And I've created quite a little energy portfolio. And if you want to come over and see the house too, uh, I'd love to show you how it works. Beautiful. And on that cheery note, we have to call it an afternoon. Thank you, son, Sean Ramos. And that's it today for Think Tech Hawaii Code Green Howard Wig. See you next time.